Hello everyone, welcome to the video for Edexcel Physics Fast Paper Solution. This is uh, IEL Physics Unit 1, January 2018, Part 3. So let's start. In 1865, in his book From uh, the Earth to the Moon, the writer Julius Verne wrote about sending man, men to the moon. In order to escape the Earth's gravitational field, uh, Verne proposed firing a capsule from a cannon of the length 220 meter as shown in his illustration from the book. So this is a cannon. This one. Okay, and the length of this cannon is 220 meter. So uh, the velocity of the capsule at the end of the cannon was estimated to be 11 km per second. Uh, calculate the acceleration to the capsule through the cannon. So you can imagine this is the starting point of the capsule somewhere inside the cannon and the, ca the capsule will uh, travel all through the cannon and come out from here. So at this point the, the capsule has some velocity which is of course final velocity V and this final velocity is 11 uh, kilometer second inverse and the capsule traveled through the tube and distance traveled through the tube is 220 meter you need to figure out the acceleration so clearly the initial velocity of the capsule u at the start it will be zero so you can use equation of motion or you can say the third equation of motion is v square is equal to u square plus 2as so v square is 11,000 square equal to 0 square plus 2a and 220 remember what did I do here the velocity was given as 11 kilometer so you need to convert this kilometer into meter multiplying by thousand okay so when you uh, solve this equation for a so acceleration would be around 275,000 uh, meter second minus 2 this is your acceleration. It can be assumed that uh, only 50% of energy supplied by the gunpowder in the cannon would have been transferred to the capsule. Determine the mass of the gunpowder that would have been required to obtain a maximum speed of 11 km per second. Mass of the capsule 1500 kg energy release from the gunpowder 3 million joule per kg so we need to determine the mass of the gunpowder and 50% of the supply to the gunpowder okay 50% can supply to the cannon would have been transferred to the capsule okay that's fine so because the mass of the capsule was given and we already know the velocity so we can figure out the kinetic energy gained by the capsule so kinetic energy ek of the capsule is half m v square if you're plugging all the values mass is 1500 and v is the velocity so half into 1500 and 11,000 square when you solve this equation you have kinetic energy is uh, around 9.1 into 10 raised to the power 10 joule this is kinetic energy gained by the capsule 
and if you see according to condition the 50 percent of the total energy supplied by the gunpowder is transferred to the capsule so you can say that this ek of ek can make energy of the capsule is in fact 50 percent of et the total energy or or 50 percent mean half of the total energy so you can say that the total energy supplied by the by the gunpowder is twice of the kinetic energy so et is 1.8 when you multiply this with the two double the kinetic energy so you have uh, uh, 1.8 into 10 raised to the power mm, 11 you this is the total energy and now next condition energy released from the gunpowder 3 million joule per kg so 1 kg is releasing 3 million joule so, so 3 into 10 to the power 6 joule and how much energy do we have 1.8 so you can say 1.8 into 10 to the power 11 is to how much mass we need to find x so you can do cross multiplication to figure out x and then x would be equal to if you multiply with this and divide by 3 to the power 6 so you have mass x is equal to 6.1 10 to the power 4 kilogram so this is the mass of the gunpowder for supplying energies of the total energy of 1.8 B. In order to land safely on the surface of the moon, Wern suggested that gases could be ejected from the capsule to reduce its speed. Explain how ejecting gases from the capsule could reduce its speed. Your answer should include reference to the Newton laws of motion. Again, it is a typical question. Suppose this is the uh, moon surface and this one is the capsule landing and I'm assuming that it is landing it's, it's just assumption it can land in any direction but I'm assuming for simplicity that it is landing uh, just vertically down it is coming down so meaning when it lands gases can be ejected in downward direction and that can cause uh, this capsule to land safely and how can we uh, explain this landing procedure so it's again it is a typical question so when gases comes out from the capsule so capsules apply force on the on the ejected gases then according to Newton's third law gases are going to apply force on on the capsule so you can see that this is the force applied by the gases on the capsule and these are the forces applied by the capsule on the on the ejected gases so in result we have a resultant force resultant or net force in upward direction which cause a deceleration in the capsule so you can reframe all these condition like uh, Please see if you are okay. Question number sixteen: A student suspended a spring from a retort stand and a and a, and and hung a mass 
from the free end of the spring show that the extension of this spring was about 0.05 meter weight of uh, mass on a spring 0.88 newton a spring constant of a spring is 18 newton meter per second so the condition is you have a retort stand something like this and then you have a spring suppose this is the original position O mean position and original length if you hang some mass that caused this spring to extend and this is spring extended I'm drawing here till here let's suppose so this much you can say that is the extension in this frame that's what we need to figure out this extension so we are given weight of the mass this can be considered as a force applying on on the spring or you can say this is the, the force that caused tension in the spring due to which you have extension and a spring constant is given so according to Hooke's law F is equal to K delta X or if you wish you can replace F with the T it's fine T is equal to K del delta X so delta X is equal to T by K T by K so T is uh, mass weight of the mass that means T is point uh, 8 uh, I'm sorry about that point 88 uh, Newton divided by K K is 18 so when you divide these two numbers you have a delta x is 0 0.048 and rounded it off so 0 0.05 meter this is the extension part b uh, the mass on this spring was placed in a measuring cylinder of water and mass moved upward a distance y as shown uh, then remain stationary okay so fine this is the position after extension in a as per previous example previous uh, uh, part a and when you put this on in a water then this mass goes up that means the extension is decreased so the free body diagram for the mass in the water is shown up thrust and the tension in the spring and the weight explain why the stationary position of the mass was higher in the water than the air so in the air there was only uh, there were only two forces acting on this mass and if you draw the free body diagram you can say that in uh, upward direction you had tension and in downward direction you had w so you can say that in the air you you had t is exactly equal to w but if you see in a liquid or in a water along with the tension upward direction you have up thrust due to fluid and in this case t plus up thrust is equal to w and T is equal to W minus U clearly because you are subtracting uh, up thrust from W so T will be less than W because T is decreased compared to the value in the air so T is decreased that's why extension in the spring should be decreased that's why mass goes up and you have a decreased extension so that's how you can explain part two determine why why uh, okay this is why you may assume that the extension of the spring when the mass was in air was 0.05 density of the water 
the spring constant, volume of mass, weight of the mass on the spring. Okay, so let's see. Meaning, in the air, you had a final position of the mass, let's see. And I am assuming this was the original position of the spring before attaching the mass in the air. This is the air condition, condition in air. And from O till it, this, this was the delta x that we found in, in part A. This is delta x in the air. When you put this, this uh, a spring in the water, as you can see in a previous example, so this was y that we need to figure out. We need to find y. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find this new extension and I'm calling it delta x dash in in the water. So once if if I have a delta x dash, the new extension, then I can subtract from delta x to figure out y. So but I know that in order to find this new extension delta x dash, I need new values of the tension. Because in the previous part, we have said that in a liquid, T is decreased. So we need to find the new value of the T. We cannot use the, uh, the first given value of the T. So we need to figure out T. So how do we do that? We have relation T is equal to W minus U. So W is uh, weight which is given and U is up to us. So if you see your data, W is 0.88. We don't have up to us, but we were given density and the volume. We can use density and the volume to figure out up to us. So you can say that, in fact, T is W minus rho V G. Rho is the density of the liquid, which is water in case, uh, in case, uh, uh, I mean, here uh, the liquid is water. V is the volume of the fluid or volume of the object immersed. G is gravitational field strength, 9.81. So if you put all the values, so W is 0.88 eight given here and density is this V the volume of the mass is this an acceleration due to gravity you can say that gravity is 9.81 Newton per kilogram. So you can use all these numbers if you figure out. So your value of T would be equal to 0.88. Some number and you know that T is K delta X dash equal to that number that you can use here and from here delta x dash would be equal to point zero three zero three meter this is the new extension which is this and now y would be equal to delta x minus delta x dash if you subtract 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0303, so y would be equal to 0 0.02 meter.
the student replaced the water in the measuring cylinder with oil. The value of y decreased. Uh, explain why y decreased. Clearly, because the student is replacing uh, water with the oil. Oil has a less density. So if density is decreased, then upthrust is decreased. So if upthrust is decreased, you can say extension is increased. So you can say that we have equation T is equal to W minus U. W is not changing. W is the weight of the of the mass. Only thing is changing is type of the fluid. So type of the fluid means the density. Density means the upthrust. So because oil is less dense, so upthrust is decreasing. That's why T is increasing. And Y should decrease. So you can rewrite, you can write the answer. Question number 17. After breaking a leg, a girl was given crutches. The free body diagram for the girl when standing with the crutches is shown. This is free body, free body diagram. Half of the girl's weight W is supported by the reaction force R of the ground on her leg. Half of her weight is supported by F1 and F2 for forces of the crutches on her body. F1 and F2 are at an angle uh, at the same angle to the vertical. Show that magnitude of F1 and F2 are equal. Okay. If you see the diagram, they are saying that F1 and F2 are making same angle with the vertical. So you can say that this angle and this angle is same, and I'm calling these angle as theta. So you can figure out the component of F1 and F2. So if you find the component F1 and F2, so I can do like this is the vertical component and this is the horizontal component. Okay. Or what you can do is instead of uh, drawing component outside here, you can draw component like this. So this is the vertical component this is horizontal component clearly this is opposite component so you can call it f1 sine theta so f1 sine theta this horizontal component similarly we have another horizontal component for f2 in that direction for this triangle this would be equal to f2 sine theta and of course we have f2 cos theta another vertical component so but in this case for part one because we need to show f1 equal to f2 and we know that ho along horizontal direction or in a horizontal direction we have we we have just two components f1 sine theta and f1 f2 sine theta and both components are same so you can say that uh, f1 sine theta is equal to f2 sine theta leftward force equal to the rightward force and there are only two forces so sine theta sine theta get cancelled and clearly f1 equal to f2 part 2 calculate the magnitude of f1 weight 650 newton angle of f1 to the vertical is 10 degree okay now what are we going to do is because we have we have said that f1 equal to f2 now uh, what I'm going to do is I will look for forces acting along vertical direction so if you see vertically we have uh, three upward forces one is vertical component of f1 in in vertical direction and this component is f1 
cos theta and the vertical component of f2 again in upward direction this is f2 cos theta and we have r acting upward so we have three upward forces f1 cos theta f2 cos theta and r in upward direction and all these three forces are being balanced by this downward weight so you can say that it's just additional step i'm writing here you can skip if you okay so i'm writing it like uh, first vertical forces which are f1 cos theta plus f2 cos theta plus r these are the vertical forces uh, which are equal to w so i'm doing two things here you know that f1 and f2 are equal so i can say that f1 cos theta and uh, f1 cos theta so i have 2 f1 cos theta so i replace f2 with f1 and why did i replace uh, f2 why not f1 because in question they are saying calculate the magnitude of f1 that's why i just replaced f2 with the f1 so f1 cos theta f1 cos theta so 2 f1 cos theta plus r and what about this r if you read the question they are saying half of the girl's weight w is supported by the reaction r that means r is w upon 2 equal to w and uh, now if you see if you send w on the other side w on the other side so it will be minus w so w by 2 plus and minus w so 2f1 cos now i'm writing the angle given which is a uh, 10 degree so cos 10 plus uh, minus w by 2 why minus because i send this w on the other side and w by 2 minus w which is minus w by 2 equal to 0 now you can see that you have weight of the of the girl which is 650 newton 650 and now you can clear you can fig, uh, uh, plugging the value of w and you can rearrange or you can make f1 as a subject when you do that so your f1 will be equal to hundred and sixty five one six five Newton this is f1 the diagram blue uh, shows the forces acting on one of the crutches the crutches uh, the crutch is at an angle theta to the vertical the weight of the crutch uh, has been ignored the reaction of uh, force of uh, the ground on the crutch okay so this is r this is r okay force exerted by the body on the crutch and frictional force of the ground on the crutch and this is the vertical angle there is a maximum frictional force that the ground can exert on the crutch explain what will happen if the girl moves the base of the crutch too far from her foot meaning what if she moves the crutch far from the foot so you can imagine this is the foot and this is the crutch and what if she moves crutch away from the foot in that direction so if she moves the crutch away from the foot so theta is going to increase this is the first thing angle to the vertical is going to increase in this case if you see uh, the component of the force exerted by the body that mean i'm talking about this component we, ha we also have a, a vertical component downward balanced by r but in this explanation we don't need uh, the vertical one so this component is let's say f uh, i'm calling it fb sine theta is fb is just 
a component of the force exerted by the body and the vertical component sin theta so clearly this vertical component uh, this this not the vertical this horizontal component depends on theta so if theta is increased so the sine theta value is going to increase if sine theta is going to increase that means the horizontal component fb sine theta is going to increase and if fb sine theta is greater than the friction force the friction and i'm calling this as a friction f so if fb sine theta is greater than friction force then crutch is going to slip i hope you understand see the crutch is made from an aluminium alloy the table shows properties of the alloy at room temperature is strain at fracture ultimate tensile stress stress at the yield point young modulus okay explain what is meant by strain at fracture of 17 percent so it's nothing it's just a what is a strain a strain is epsilon epsilon mean change in length per unit length so a strain at fracture of 17 percent means change in length per unit length is 17 percent at the time of fracture so 17 percent strain Show that the strain at the yield point is about 0.4 percent you may assume that stress is directly proportional to the strain up to yield point hmm. so again the young modulus is sigma upon epsilon and this epsilon is the strain and you can rearrange this equation for a strain so a strain is equal to sigma upon young models and the sigma is 280 into 10 to the power 6 remember this is a stress this is the stress at yield point which is 280 million pascal million mega 10 to the power 6 divided by young modulus 65 g pascal and 65 g means giga 10 to the power 9 so if you solve this if you divide these two number you have epsilon or strain is 4.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is the strain you need to figure out the percentage so multiply this strain by 100 to figure out the percentage that means you can say that epsilon is 0.43 percent use the data from the table to sketch the stress stain graph for aluminium alloy scales are not required but you should mark significant values on the axis so if you see these are the values given in the table so important point is we have initially the graph should be a straight line because till yield points and uh, then after yield point we have a uh, permanent deformation but you must mention that we have these two numbers and then this number important to mention so you can say that I, I try to but if you do with pencil or pen because I'm I'll try it. so at some point you have a straight line 
uh, I'm sorry it is not it should be a straight line let's see if I try again so at some point and then after this you can okay that's fine somewhere it's up to you okay let's this is the fracture point so you must mention a stress at yield points it is 280 so this is your stress so you can mention somewhere here it's value 280 or you can make it a little higher so it does not mess with these numbers so this is 280 and uh, ultimate tensile stress that means this is a point where the uh, is about to break so this is higher than the 280 so somewhere 310 and then this point must be 17 person that's how you draw this sketch thank you very much i hope you enjoy the video see you next time